To be honest, my friends, I do not want to make this video, but it is what it is. Before I begin this video, I want to make something extremely clear. At the end of the day, if you fucked up in the past tremendously, but wholeheartedly apologize for it in the future and actually make an effort to do better and be better, I think everyone deserves a second chance if that's the case. We all mess up, that's what makes us humans, but owning up for our mistakes is what makes us respectable beings. Anyways, if after all of this ordeal you still want the Doom Eternal soundtrack to release on Spotify and other streaming platforms, leave a like on this video. <sighs> Let's begin. For context, right after Doom Eternal released on March of 2020, it was made abundantly clear by Mick Gordon that he doubted he was ever going to work with Bethesda again, stating that composing the soundtrack for Doom Eternal was very challenging thanks to the team's unwillingness to work efficiently. After that, studio head of its software released a statement on Reddit defending the team and staining Mick Gordon's reputation in the process. After two long years of radio silence from Mick's part, he suddenly released an hour-long statement defending himself from the accusations made by its software. I'm not going to go through the entire post on this video because it's, it's really large, but if you want me to do so, please let me know in the comments for a future video. This whole statement was issued in response to its software studio had Reddit post published on May of 2020. According to Mick, Morty lied about the circumstances surrounding the development of the Doom Eternal soundtrack and blamed Mick entirely for its failure. He was then offered a six-figure settlement to never speak about the matter. According to Mick, this statement made by Marty severely tarnished both his professional and personal reputation. And with this hour-long statement, he's just exercising his right to defend his image. It is made very apparent from Mick's words that composing the Doom Eternal soundtrack was a complete nightmare and that Doom Eternal is the worst project he has ever been involved with for a myriad of different reasons. When the project began on early 20. 18, its software assigned to make Gordon to deliver two songs per month. Thing is, one of the game's key features was music that closely matched the gameplay. Yet, at the time, its software didn't have more than 90% of the levels in the game finished. In fact, most of the game didn't even exist. So aiming to produce finished music for levels that hadn't existed yet doesn't make any sense at all. We all know the Doom Eternal soundtrack Track. It is tied extremely tight with the gameplay flow and environments for the game. Details on the characters, lore, boss encounters and levels were still years away. Yet, management at its software expected Mick Gordon to deliver two songs per month that fit perfectly the non-existent levels. Mick had to take inspiration from concept art and text to write those songs, something that was a complete nightmare to deal with. Mick brought up these issues to management and offered a solution to meet its software demands, one that without a shadow of a doubt was the right way to tackle this project. Not only did management at its software decline his offer, but Mick Gordon was cut out from music meetings with the team, his emails went unanswered too, and its software withheld valuable information on the game's development, something that is crucial when composing a soundtrack for basically any form of media entertainment. Even after all of these problems, management didn't pay Mick Gordon a single penny after 8 months of work and all-nighters. And after his first payment, he went another 11 months without pay. According to Mick Gordon, this project was his sole source of income at the time. So not being paid a single penny for almost a year is a complete nightmare. Nightmare. Composing music is not for free, and Mick Gordon doesn't go solo. He has people working for him that also need to be paid. So he had to fund this 
project out of his pocket. Watching your savings account rapidly dwindle for almost a year without ever going up, only going down, all because your contractor refuses to pay you is just something I do not wish even on my worst enemies. People need money to survive. In-game scores are budgeted in minutes. Developers calculate the length of the score at the start of each project and negotiate a per minute rate with a composer. In this case, Meg was contracted to deliver a soundtrack that was 142 minutes long. If you remember at QuakeCon 2018, both the Mars score and Super Gorness levels featured music that was not on the final release of the game. After QuakeCon ended, its software said to Meg that both of those tracks were not going to be used, but because they used those songs on a demo show to millions of people, Mick Gordon deserved compensation, which he appealed which eventually its software caved in. Working on this project was so understandably hard that for over a year Mick had to sleep on his studio, surviving on meals heated on a microwave and away from his family. Again, a total nightmare. And that wasn't the worst of all. At E3 2019, Bethesda announced a collector's edition for Doom Eternal, which contained Mick Godin's original soundtrack for Doom Eternal. At the time, of the reveal, Mick didn't even know he was going to produce it, and a contract hadn't even existed yet. Watching his name pop up on a collector's edition for Doom Eternal meant that a lot of pressure was thrown over him. Attaching his name to it meant that he would be held publicly accountable if it failed. At some point, Mick even considered quitting the project, being that he hadn't been paid for over 8 months and that he had been funding all expenses from his own pocket meant that quitting the project would ultimately cost him more money, so he had no choice but to push on. Mick eventually got paid at the end of November 2019, and its software ceased all communication with the man. When the game finally launched, Mick noticed that its software used more than double the amount of music Mick was contracted for. Its software paid Mick Godin for 142 minutes of his craft, yet the game has 286 minutes of music. When the project was done, Mick was obligated to send its software all of the raw samples and audio files he had made since the very beginning. Its software using more than double the music Mick was contracted for means that they, its software, Bethesda, Cinemax, Microsoft, owe him a huge amount of money, even more as to what he was initially paid. As of the recording of this video, Mick hasn't been paid a single penny. Regarding the collector's edition, it was not only two days before the game released that Mick Godin received the contract to produce the Doom Eternal soundtrack for the collector's edition. He had 29 days to mix a total of 12 songs, something that, according to him, was not impossible. Yet, two weeks later, after having more than half of the album mixed, he received a letter by its software. The soundtrack was set to release the 16th of April 2020, but the team at its software were open to delaying it for some days, until its software sent an email to Mick Godin, stating that the April 16 release date was a necessity, because consumer protection laws in some countries stated that anyone who purchased a collector's edition for Doom Eternal were entitled to a full refund if they didn't receive what was advertised. And if that happened, its software threatened Mick Godin for those losses, because according to their view of the contract, Meg was legally viable for any losses its software received thanks to the refunds. They were ready to come after Meg Godin if he didn't meet their expectations. What the fuck? For the remaining 8 days, Mick had to crunch 20 hours per day to get the job done. He slept under his desk and wasn't able to spend the holidays with his family. At the final hours of this ordeal, Mick encountered a technical problem with his computer and asked Bethesda for a minor extension of time to work on it. He had 10 tracks to hand over, over the 12 he was legally required to make. He just needed some extra hours to get them all done. Yet. 
hours before release, it software had a group call with Mecca, stating that they actually didn't want his 10 songs, but other songs. At the last possible minute, it software said that they would use their own version of the soundtrack for the collector's edition, one that they had been working for the past 6 months. Of course, this left Mick devastated, yet he was just a contractor, it was its software's product, and he had no ground to protest. At the end, Mick sent the 12 songs to its software, they put those 12 songs alongside another 47 songs mixed by its software and shipped the product. Mick Godin, the composer of the Doom Eternal soundtrack, wasn't allowed to hear his own final product before release. What the fuck? Now, I'm going to be completely honest, there's always two sides to every story, always, but if at least one-fourth, one-fifth of this whole statement is true, its software has a lot of things to explain. Of course, video game development is hard. In the field, you are always going to encounter these types of situations, but at the end of the day, it is completely your choice how you tackle certain situations and how you develop a project. At the end of the day, there's always going to be bad decisions and good decisions. And again, it is our call how to approach those decisions and situations. I really hope all of this gets resolved in a way it benefits all groups. What I talked in this video is not even half of the full statement, so I'll have another video covering the entirety of it on Saturday or Monday, so subscribe and click the bell to get that video. But anyways, my friends, have an awesome day, stay safe, play video games, adios, bye.